I'm Jancy to Spain with Bright Idea Tutoring, and this is my second video in the series on aromaticity. If you missed the first video, you may want to go watch that one first. It's going to take you through the first few steps in determining whether a compound is aromatic. This video begins on step four, which is counting the number of pi electrons in the compound, and then using that number to determine whether the compound is aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic. In order to count the number of pi electrons in the compound, we just need to know how many electrons each atom in the compound is worth. We can start with the carbons. A regular sp2 hybridized carbon that's touching a double bond is worth one pi electron. A carbocation is worth zero pi electrons. A carb anion is worth two pi electrons and a carbon radical is worth one pi electron. So that's pretty straightforward. Just to show you a few examples. Benzene, in which all the carbons are just regular sp2s, counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, six pi electrons. Take a look at this guy. These are all sp2, that counts as 1, 2, 3, 4. And then here we have a carb anion, 5, 6. So there's a total of 6 pi electrons. That same compound, but with a carbocation. The carbocation counts as 0, so there's just a total of 1, 2, 3, 4. Now you'll have a chance when you do homework or practice problems to apply these to much larger molecules and lots of other kinds. If you have any questions or you run into any problems, shoot me a message and we'll set up a Skype session to answer any questions that you might have. Now one thing that'll happen is you'll run into some examples where you have heteroatoms, non-carbon, non-hydrogen atoms in your ring. So you also have to know how many pi electrons those atoms are worth. And it just depends on their hybridization. Like we discussed in aromaticity uh, part one, you can really simply tell hybridization just based on whether that atom is touching a double bond or not. If it's touching a double bond, it's gonna be sp2. And if it's not touching a double bond, but only singles, that's going to be sp3. Now keep in mind, this is a broad generalization. If you're taking organic one and you're actually studying hybridization, you don't want to go by these rules. But for the purpose of an aromaticity lecture, this is going to work very well, okay? So if we're looking at some examples of nitrogens, oxygens, if they're touching a double bond they're going to be sp2 and they're going to count as one pi electron. If they're not touching a double bond they're going to count as sp3 and they're going to count as two pi electrons. So if we looked at this compound here, we have one, two, three, four, five sp2 carbons that would count as one pi electron each, and we have an oxygen that's touching a double bond, which means it's sp2 hybridized as well. So it counts as one pi electron. So there's a total of six. Here's an example where we have a nitrogen that's touching only single bonds. Only single bonds means it's sp3 hybridized and it counts as two pi electrons. So we count this one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pi electrons. So once we've counted our pi electrons, we're going to apply Huckel's rule. Now, your professor and your book probably told you to take your number of pi electrons and set it equal to 4n plus 2, 
or 4n. If you set your number of pi electrons equal to 4n plus 2 and you get an integer, that's going to tell you your compound is aromatic. And if you set your number of pi electrons equal to 4n and you get an integer, that tells you your compound is anti-aromatic. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but in my opinion, there's a much easier way to think it through. All you need to do is look at your number of pi electrons, and if it's even but not divisible by 4, for example, 2, 6, 10, 14, etc. That tells you you have an aromatic compound. And if you look at your number of pi electrons and it's even and divisible by 4, for example, 0, 4, 8, 12, then you have an anti-aromatic compound. And there are going to be rare cases when you count up your number of pi electrons and they're going to be odd. When you have an odd number of pi electrons, that lets you know that your compound is non-aromatic. So that's it. To summarize, you need to go through this list. First, check to see if your compound is a ring. Second, make sure that all the carbons in that ring are sp2 hybridized. Third, make sure that your compound is planar. If it's met all of those criteria, then you can count the number of pi electrons and check to see, is it even but not divisible by 4? Then it's aromatic. Is it even and divisible by 4? It's anti-aromatic. Or is it odd and non-aromatic? It's a really simple process. Now one thing I want to mention, if your professor is evil and is making this really difficult, there are going to be some unusual cases that you're going to have to cover. There may be cases in which you have an anti-aromatic compound of greater than eight carbons, which can become non-planar by bending, which will make it non-aromatic, which is more stable than anti-aromatic. There are also cases in which you have a non-aromatic compound that's specifically non-aromatic because it has an odd number of pi electrons that can, through a resonance process, become aromatic. Now, I wouldn't expect the majority of you to see these, but I also want you to be aware that it's a possibility. So if your professor starts mentioning stuff like this in class, pay attention and call me. If there's anything I can do to help you, shoot me an email, I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching. Take care.